Hello and welcome back to another out of spec detailing video. Behind me here, we have the brand new out of spec Cybertruck Cyber Beast. And Kyle just went on a huge adventure with this truck and man, does it need a bath. So this is gonna be a first wash for the out of spec Cybertruck. We're gonna go through everything, cleaning the wheels, cleaning up the fender liners, and most importantly, getting all the schmutz off of the stainless steel. Let's jump into it. So Kyle's behind the camera here, and I just got to ask you, what the heck did you do to this thing, Kyle? Well, we took delivery just about a week ago in Florida, and we, you know, murdered the entire population <laughs> of mosquitoes in Florida. And then we, uh, you know, came up to the northern part of the U.S. after driving it all the way to California and up through Wyoming and Utah and back here to Colorado and got it covered in mag chloride, salt, sand, and just general nastiness the last two days of driving through after the aftermath of a major snowstorm here in the northeast or northeast where are we north middle <laughs> <laughs> we're in colorado now yes yeah so the big thing with Cybertruck, and I, everybody's alluded to this, it's like supposed to be the world's toughest truck, but yet you can't leave bugs on it and you're not supposed to leave road salt and grime on it. Now, I of course have done some videos on how to clean and maintain the stainless steel on here. This is going to be an ever evolving process as I really dial in my process throughout cleaning this. If you know, my recommendation was Barkeeper's Friend and Windex, but I really want to go an extra mile and figure out if we can find a coating for this. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be testing a bunch of stuff on this, but let's quickly take a walk around and just look at the general condition. Obviously, the front end is just covered in bugs and bugs are one of the things on here that I was most curious about because a lot of the cleaners we use on here can be actually very, very harsh and extremely caustic, especially to something like stainless steel. So we're actually gonna be testing out some different bug cleaners today. My hope would be that we could just get this off with soap. So when we actually start the wash, we're gonna foam it down, see what it does to the bugs. If not, we're gonna have to bring in a little bit heavier weapons and come in here with some actual bug remover. So it's important to note that I took delivery of this truck and obviously we have not touched it since then. So this is yep. the, as delivered, bare stainless, no coatings, no anything on top of it. Also another thing for the viewers, they're curious, uh, we are not gonna wrap this truck for six months. We're gonna keep it as stainless and you can already see we're beating the crap out of it because yep. I'm curious. I mean, everyone's asking, is it rusting? And at least to my eye, I have not noticed any rust on this truck. There was a couple when we took delivery on the inside of the passenger door. I'll show you okay. if I can still find it in there. Um, but overall, I would say it, it honestly looks better dirty than clean in my impression. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it actually does look pretty cool in this. Um, I'm curious to see once we get this cleaned off, because you said they did not actually sand this for you when you picked it up, correct? There's no way. So it arrived on, I think we took delivery on a Thursday. Okay. It arrived Wednesday at like 10 p.m. and we took delivery on Thursday at 11 a.m. Okay, yeah, so the guys that I talked to down in Austin when we were down there earlier this year said they have about three to four hours to fully sand this and they're doing a seven stage sanding on it. So once we get all this crap off of it, we can definitely see what the finish really looks like. Every single Cybertruck I've seen up close in person has been completely different finish because they're going in with DA sanding and really just making the finish look good. We may explore that throughout the series of figuring out Cybertruck before we wrap it. Is that something I can do here at the shop? I think obviously, of course it is, but I don't have much work sanding metal. I'm typically polishing paint and other areas like that. But yeah, this thing's truly filthy. So what we're going to do to start off, we're going to start on the wheels first. Wheels and all of the plastic cladding up in here. We're gonna try and get all that road salt out of there, get the wheels scrubbed down, get the tires cleaned up. Then we'll go into our initial rinse phase. The, what we're gonna do on here with the rinse is essentially foam it down as is. We're gonna let the soap get in there, break down the salt, break down the road grime, and hopefully take care of some of these bugs. I'll then go back and rinse it with clean water, foam it again and actually start the actual contact wash. Now on here, there's been tons of different things that have been said about what soaps you should use on Cybertruck. What I found from my testing, 
Dawn dish soap is not a great solution for this. Everybody was saying when this first came out that Tesla was recommending that. That's absolutely not true. They're recommending you use a pH neutral car shampoo or snow foam or something similar. Now I do have some acid car washes here that I've been playing around with for some other videos upcoming. I don't think we're gonna use it on this because I'm worried that it could do something crazy to the stainless steel, but that may be down the road trial. So let's get the wheels cleaned up and start washing. Yeah, so we put the suspension in high, why? Yep. Suspension and high so that we can clean up in this area here. So what I'll do is basically spray some simple green on here, which is basically a mild degreaser in here. And then I will foam everything down while I'm scrubbing the wheels. This will dwell, can rinse it, refoam it. It's gonna be a process for sure, but we'll get it back to clean. Yeah, and just to show everyone, like it's very interesting the patterns that this kind of salt schmutz leaves yes. on the stainless. It's I think looks great. And I'm curious to see after we get this rinsed off, my theory that this is gonna be like kind of stained in here. Oh. Yeah, especially bugs, same, and all of this stuff around here. I think you're gonna see it as a stain in there, which is why, you know, we may need to go in, of course, with Barkeeper's Friend and Windex. So we'll, well the, see how that goes, but. The back of this is dirty. We've been wiping the camera down so we can actually see the, cause that's your rear view mirror. Yep. No washer on that one, which is crazy. We have it charging on level two at the moment, but um, yeah, this is probably one of the nastiest cyber trucks out there at the moment. Yeah, I mean, dirt is one thing. Like we've seen a few guys going to Moab right now and just getting them completely filthy. Road salt is some serious stuff and definitely on stainless steel, my concern is how does this corrode over time? I worked with a lot of Audis in the past that have, you know, the full stainless steel grills or stainless steel finished grills, mirror caps and things like that. And in the Colorado mountains, it would actually rust the heck out of them and they were permanently stained to the point where folks have to completely replace grills, completely replace mirror caps and things like that. So I'm anxious to see what this actually yeah, looks or like. Or completely replace a truck in this case. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> we're gonna see, but we gotta get all this crud off of here first and then we'll see what we're working with. So wheel cleaning and fender liner time here. So what I'm gonna do is knock off as much dirt as possible. First off, so I've got actually what we call a turbo tip on here. Basically spins this around. It's gonna kind of flush as much dirt as possible. Then we've got our wheel and tire bucket set up over here. So I'm gonna be using Simple Green straight on this as my wheel cleaner in here. You probably have a ton of brake dust on here, Kyle. I saw how you were ripping this thing around, but- Yeah, we have used the brakes a lot. <laughs> I think we'll be okay in that situation. So let's get rinsing and see how this comes out. What are you doing now? So going in here first with a rubber and tire cleaner, this is gonna get all that mold release off. You're gonna see it turn very much brown and it's gonna basically bleed off on here and see how nasty that already is. I'm gonna hit the wheels here with some simple green. Again, this is just a very cheap, basic cleaner. I love this stuff for cleaning wheels, for cleaning plastics, everything like that. Now, I typically would come in here with a wheel cleaner, but I think Simple Green's gonna help actually break down the dirt a little bit better. Just gonna try and get the barrels as much as we possibly can. Look at the ground. Yep. That's disgusting, right? And then lastly, we're gonna come back in this has CarPro, let me remember the name of this, CarPro Reset in here. This is a new snow foam that I've been testing. Very good at breaking down a lot of dirt and road film, which we have a ton of on here. pH neutral soap, put about two to three ounces in the bottom of this, fill it with water. We're gonna have this in here to aid with 
cleaning all that dirt. Now we're gonna jump in here to the bucket and we've got tons of different brushes. So first off, I'm just gonna start off here on the tires. Get these scrubbed down, you're gonna see all that mold release and all of that road film come right off of there. Can you explain what mold release is? So basically on a new tire, when they're manufacturing them, they go in this basically metal press in there and on the outside of it, they have to have something to release it, otherwise it can get stuck in there. And that mold release can look like a few different things. It can be blue on quite a few tires. And you'll see it kind of come out of the pores of the tire when they're brand new. So very important to do this to get it off before you're applying tire shine or anything like this. Now let's start on the faces of the wheels here. And now you're getting the barrels. Yeah, so I'm just getting right behind this little spoke in here. Holds a ton of dirt and can be a little challenging to get. So I've got this small, easy detail brush and I've actually bent it so it goes around those quite easily. Now I'm gonna hit the wheel faces with a towel because it just helps get in all those little nooks and crannies in there. We'll be able to see how much stuff we get off there. You can already see a little bit coming off, but I think that first initial actually got quite a bit off. Come in here with a little lug nut brush. So weird they don't have anything for here yet. Yeah, it's supposed to have the caps on it. I have the caps in the bed. Right, but they're not shipping with those because you had to purchase them from Ben, correct? Yep. Yeah, that's pretty strange. So next we're gonna hit the barrels here with a big, easy detail brush and just go in there and really scrub that. This is the area a lot of people struggle with cleaning, but if you have a brush like this, very, very simple. Wow, that's a odd piece in there. Kyle, look at this here. Look how close that the metal caliper bit. is? No, that caliper's back here. Oh. Look at that piece. Is it like a mud scraper? I don't know what that is exactly, yeah. but it's... Could be a mud scraper. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit too small to be like a counterweight of some kind. Right. All right, so wheels should be pretty much done as of now. Gotta find my fender liner brush. So this is a little bit stiffer bristled. Are all these brushes linked in the description? Yes, so we'll put everything in the link underneath the video here and you can just pick them up on Amazon. These are very, very good to have. Just keep wheels clean and just make sure you maintain them. We can definitely show after how you rinse them out, but basically pretty straightforward. You just hit them with the pressure washer or you can rinse them with a garden hose. Just get all the crap out of them because you don't want to, you know, have that and then go back to the face of the wheel here. So 
so Kyle, how many owners do you think are actually going to clean their truck? A lot more than most people on the internet think. Yeah. I think a lot of these will be pavement princesses. So I kind of look at these like the Rivian folks. Like I have a ton of Rivian customers. I think I did 19 of them last year. And it's, you know, a lot of people take them off road, but there's a lot of people who just want to have a very nice truck or SUV and just enjoy them as a, a normal car, but has the capabilities of going off road and doing all that fun stuff. Yeah. And this certainly isn't as off road capable as a Rivian. Okay. Really? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So now we've got pretty much the most amount of grime scrubbed down. So we're going to go back through, do a rinse and hopefully see what our work looks like here. looking nice and clean so afterwards once we get the car all rinsed off and washed we're going to be putting Gion wet coat on the wheels suspension components like this just to give it a slight bit of protection i know kyle's going to go test this for the next you know two three weeks even a month whatever it may be and really put it through its paces so it would be nice to have just a little something on there but kyle you can come in here and see how clean these wheels are there's nothing on them now yeah again that's just simple simple green and you did 4,500 hard miles on this thing. Yeah, we raced it across the country. We've driven it through ice, snow, and salt, and yeah, that came out brand new. So glad to know that that works at least. So yeah. we'll just repeat that times four yep. for all the wheels <laughs> and then be back with the viewers for the rest. Perfect. Well, just spent, I don't know, 30 minutes cleaning the wheels, but man, look at these things. So this has dried a little bit. Wheels are looking fantastic. What I'm very impressed with is how these plastic fender liners cleaned up now a lot of teslas model x model 3 have a lot of carpeted ones this makes it 10 times easier just like rivian to go in there clean all the mud and dirt off so next steps let's get this thing washed we're gonna air this thing all the way down lay some pack as i like to say we're gonna foam it down let that sit for a little while rinse it off i'll be curious to see how much stuff we actually get off of it i rinsed a little panel over there and noticed a ton of rust spots and We'll talk more about rust spots. It's not as bad as you think. So in the foam can in here, we again have Car Pro Reset. This is an intensive car shampoo on here. So it's gonna really break down all that road grime, road film. Now, if this wasn't super dirty, what I would probably do is rinse it first, foam it and start a contact wash. We're not necessarily worried about scratches here, but I want to let the soap do its job here and really break down all of this crud. And again, I'm very anxious to see what this will do specifically on the bugs, but let's get foaming. That's right. So we're gonna let this sit for quite a while now and just kind of let it break down all of that grime. Tyler, I want you to come in here a little bit closer. And you can already see how this has fallen off, but look at all the staining in there. Holy smokes. Oh, wow. So maybe the rinse will get quite a bit of that off, but that's already pretty surprising what this is looking like. And this is what I was talking about with stainless steel. Like in this area, I can see it's turning blue. So stainless goes really three colors. It goes kind of blue. It'll go orange if you use the wrong concoction of products on here or it'll be bright shiny silver but yeah this will be very interesting to get this rinse down this panel is looking good as you can see it's just breaking down all of that but i think once it dries as this comes down could be uh yeah i, I will know. say our truck looked a lot better than the austin trucks in terms of the finish on the stainless you know I, we had one of those trucks had like a completely different colored door Yes. We we didn't have any of that with this. I mean, I noticed a little bit, but it wasn't anything that bad. Did you notice that all the DA marks in it? Yes, it had DA marks. It had like weird streaking. Uh, well, maybe not DA marks, but definitely had some streaking. Yeah, we'll look at it here once it's done. But I'm curious to see if Tesla over time starts doing that at the factory instead of the service centers, because that to me seems like 
a terrible situation having guys trying to prep vehicles and deal with sanding these trucks. Because from what I understand at the Austin one, when these cars come in, they just kind of go, oh boy, this is going to be a long one. Whereas like something like Model X, Model 3 takes 20 minutes, rinse off, get on the lot to sell. Yep, I will say uh, they kept all of the cyber trucks inside at the Jacksonville Center because of the rain. And I'm like, this is the world's toughest truck. Yeah. What are you, why, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, water's kind of strange on this and it, it spots very easy from what I saw down in Austin. So I worked one day, did kind of a ton of testing. It rained overnight and I came back and I was like, oh my gosh, water is a serious issue on this. That's why I'm curious to see, okay, are these coatings gonna help with stuff like that? Are they gonna help with fingerprints? Cause originally when this came out, everybody's like, oh, it's stainless steel. It's not gonna fingerprint. And I'm like, have you ever looked at your refrigerator and it's a nightmare. I remember calling Kyle during his road trip and he's like, dude, the fingerprints are so bad. Oh, oh yeah, the fingerprints get gnarly. And then, but we had so many fingerprints built up that they no longer were individual fingerprints. Yeah, you just do the whole truck in a one solid fingerprint and you're <laughs> yes. good to go. Yeah. Well, this is looking pretty much dry up here. Which yeah, is, wow. Uh, okay, I mean, the doors are looking good. So yeah. Not too terribly bad. I can see it definitely broke down a lot of that salt back here. Absolutely. As you can see how dry that is, but yeah, definitely tons of streaks in it. This is kind of interesting in here. That's mm -hmm. just some soap scum that's actually coming off. Look at the dirt that yeah. just came off that. Yeah, wow. Okay, well, I think it's time to rinse. So let's get this thing rinsed down, refoamed, contact wash. Whoa, the hood looks wild. I like this too. I do want to make a note on something funny here in the literature Tesla gives you. They say not to get your pressure washer tip within 12 inches of the panel, which I'm like, isn't this supposed to be bulletproof? That seems a little odd to me. It must have something to do with the gaps. Yeah, it, it could be. But yeah, this is actually, I'm surprised how much that got off already. Like you can just see this band here. I talked about this banding while I was down in Austin. Hmm. The doors are different than this as far as thickness from the front and rear quarter panels. but. I can already see this band in here where it's kind of a little bit darker. Yeah. Now the barkeeper's friend completely got that off. So okay. this will definitely need to be a situation, I think, Kyle, that we're going to have to do that. Um, oh, yeah. That doesn't have to be today, but, you know, in upcoming future, let's just get this clean so you can do some nice Yeah, things. absolutely. We'll do a video on just like the basic cyber truck, what everyone should do when they get theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. So talk about stains. I think this is going to be all oh, kind of stained oh. in there. We'll see once it comes off of rinsing. Once bar keepers will get it out, right? Yeah, 100% it will. But yeah, that's... This is the thing I'm really worried about is like, are you going to have to do barkeeper's solution every, every time. single time you wash this? Because that's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Wow. Dang. Okay. Well, let's keep rinsing. And it's only one week of bugs and it's not even that hot out. No. Yeah. When these are baking and this material is so strange. I heard you mention this in a video of how hot it gets. Yeah. Very. I literally like thought I was in tanning booth when I was in Austin. It was like 60 degrees ambient and my face was red the rest of the day <laughs> yeah. doing the hood. So, wow. Okay. Yeah.
what is going on here? Why is this like beating up? I wonder if your wiper fluid. Yeah, it must be the wiper fluid. Weird. Yeah, you can see it's like very dull here. Yeah. And it's kind of beating it up there. Very strange. Sorry. Just the regular Tesla kind, isn't it? Yep, yeah. just the regular whatever was delivered with it. So that is those rust spots we're talking about. And you can see how it's kind of bleeding down there if yep. I move my finger. Wow. Okay. But that's just surface rust. It is. Yeah. And that's that's the thing everybody is freaking out about. But doesn't so every car get those? Every single car. Now, you mostly see it on white vehicles. You'll see these little orange kind of pimples and freckles all over it. Yeah, totally. That is from either industrial fallout, which is stuff that just comes out of the air, bonds to your paint. It is also from brake dust. So this is iron in there that really gets in there. It also happens during transport of new vehicles. So like Audis and Porsches that come through the port in Houston, they get on a rail yard up here. And, and this was rail yarded or railed up. Yes. This was on a train. Exactly. So that can, you know, that could even actually be from your drive back through the mag chloride and salt and all that, or even brake dust. But yeah, I think you're going to see quite a bit of that over these trucks and not having any protection on here. That's why, again, finding a coating that's going to help minimize stuff like that will really help in the future. Right. But the good news is surface level. Yeah. No, Th this was made out to be this huge ordeal that the trucks are rusting. They can't get wet. No, it, this is every single car on the planet gets. It just shows up so. more on this. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people are trying to bash this truck in a lot of ways. Sure. In mainstream media. I really think that's what happened here and it blew up out of proportion, but I've seen cars in here with iron removal spray. You spray the whole car down and it turns bright purple. Like it's really nasty stuff and it takes a lot of work to get it off. But this is actually easier to get off this than painted vehicles. Hmm. Cause a lot of the times you'd either have to clay this or polish it. And on a car you've coated, you don't want to continually polish and polish. Whereas this, you can likely, you know, quickly barkeepers, friend it, Windex, done. Wow. Okay. Nice. So second foam now, and we're going to start our contact wash. I'm going to spray some bug cleaner on here. I think we just go for it and try it. It's a very aggressive products. I diluted it one to one. So it's not quite as strong as I normally use on something like paint, but I think it should be fine on here. I don't know. Well, if there's ever a truck to test it on, it's this one. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Don't, don't try this at home, but good thing I'm not at home. <laughs> oh, one thing I will mention about the bugs, Colton, yep. is um, the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian and the Silverado had windshields covered in bugs. And I think the angle of ours did was less, uh, less steep. And yeah, we had I'm noticing that I don't see quite a, as many bugs at all. Yeah. I mean the lightning, you couldn't even see out of it. And this thing, we had just a few bugs on the windshield. It wasn't bad. I wonder if the wiper helps with that too. Yeah, but we didn't really use the wiper across the country. Okay. Uh, that makes sense, but I'll be curious to see what this does. So what product is this? So this is, this is the wrong bottle for it, but it's oh. a PNS bug remover. Um, this is in a Gion bottle here, but it's very, very effective. What it essentially does is bugs are extremely ex acidic and they can actually start eating things away. So a product like this, what it does is kind of neutralizes them and you'll actually see it kind of bleed off paint or stainless steel in this situation. And it really, really helps. But we'll just get the window while we're at it here. Get all the bugs off, safe on glass, plastics, anything. So but we're not sure about stainless steel yet. Not sure about stainless. We're gonna find out in about 15 minutes once we get this thing rinsed down and washed. What, what, what's so funny? <laughs> what? Not sure about stainless. We're, we're not sure about it. Did your hand feel yet? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Your hand is feeling it. Yeah, that uh, definitely hurts the hand sometimes. All right, that should be good. So it's time for second foam. And same solution as before? Same solution, probably need to make a little bit more. Honestly, this is kind of one of those trucks though with the stainless, you don't necessarily need to foam it again because you're not worried about scratching it. 
This really helps on paint, add some lubrication on there, but yeah, not a huge ordeal. This stuff will still scratch though, for sure. Oh. <laughs> So we'll start kind of on the side. I want to let that sit for a while. So let's just start scrubbing this thing down and see how it looks. And what do you have in the bucket? So bucket is filled with about 10 of these microfiber mitts and same solution. It is the CarPro reset on there. And I get stuck in all the little stainless steel corners. And do you recommend someone to use this soap for every wash? I've never used this on Cybertruck, so that's why I wanted to test it. Pretty much any pH neutral snow foam or car shampoo is gonna be just fine on it. But you really wanna make sure it's not acidic or basic. That's where you can start getting in trouble with this. Surprised actually with as much road film as on here, how smooth it still is. Like on a car that's completely unprotected, this would feel like very sticky, if you would. You'd feel all the grit on it and it actually feels pretty darn good. Right, so rather than two bucket method, you're just using fresh mitts every time. Yeah, so this is something new that I've been playing around with. I've, I've seen so many people use it and uh, a lot of people saying, hey, why don't you use that method? And honestly, I always thought it was kind of silly until the first time I tried it. And then I'm like, oh, this actually makes a lot of sense. Now, Kyle doesn't like this because it's expensive. You have to buy, you know, eight to 10 of these, which is between 80 and 100 bucks. But, you know, to me, if you really want to maintain your car, I have a lot of customers that, you know, buy foam cannons and things like that. Another 80 bucks, 100 bucks is not bad. And it's actually a safer, more efficient method at washing your car than going into the bucket, back out and dealing with contaminants. Yeah, I'm not against it per se. It's just think it's impractical because then you got to wash 10 wash mitts. Yeah, for me, it's just one laundry load. Yeah. I just throw them immediately in the washer and it's good to go. Yeah, that's fine then. Yeah, every time I wash a car, they get um, thrown in the washing machine and dried and easy to go. The Beast logo here is interesting how orange it is. Hmm. I'm gonna kind of save the trim, plastic, the black plastic trim for pretty much last year, but we'll move around this side. And this is crazy how quickly the stainless dries. Yeah, you don't want to wash this thing in the sun. No. Absolutely not. You're going to have tons of issues with water spotting and issues like that. Because here we have decent water, but I've also got the CR spotless system where I can basically let water dry on the car and it's not going to spot it whatsoever. But yeah, getting quite a bit of dirt and grime off. These were pretty fresh here. So not too terribly bad. I think our rinse actually did pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm impressed with how much you got off with just a rinse, which seems unusual. Yeah, totally agree. I honestly, I think that has a lot to do with that um, soap that I'm using. Okay. That's, it's really what it's made. That for. reset. Yeah, car pro reset. It's, and does it strip any coatings? Is that why it's called no. reset? So it's, it's actually for unclogging coatings. So that's a whole nother video that I still have yet to make, but talking about what happens when ceramic coatings get clogged, mm -hmm. essentially when they stop beating doesn't mean they're dead it just means that you have a layer of road film on there that you need to hand wash off with either an intensive cleaner or um you know hand wash contact wash is normally the easiest and best solution for it well we're gonna have to go get this thing all dirty all over again i know absolutely so now we can kind of focus here on the front and then I'll hit the top of the glass last, but I'm curious to see what happens with these bugs. It 
So Kyle, I want you to feel this. You're actually getting rock chips in here. Yeah, I feel it. Is that what those are? Yep. Huh. Well, we got peppered with rocks and stuff. Yeah, that's what you were saying. And I was curious, you know, that piece of glass to me, I, I know it's very strong or so Tesla says, but that's a big piece of glass and I wouldn't be surprised, you know, cracking that. I actually was watching last night, the guys go down to Baja and they yeah. crack one of the windshields. Yeah, windows. right, in the big uh, hit. Uh, but the windshield's 1900 bucks, which is less than a Model X windshield. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's not bad at all. No, I know. Wow, so I'm actually very impressed here what it's doing with the bugs. Yeah, wow, that just came off. That was cool. Yeah, still getting some staining on there, though. Hmm. That's really weird. I can't believe it's getting rock chips. Who would have known? Nice thing, though, with this is you don't have to be like extremely delicate with it. Like if you have bugs, you can just kind of hammer them. Yeah, because it's stainless. No -go. Yeah. I like how it's called stainless. I'm not a materials expert, but we have staining on it. Oh, I, I keep saying that all the time. Like stainless steel is supposed to be stainless, but it still stains. So like, how does that make any sort of sense? Right, yeah, just bad name. I'm gonna grab this here and clean the big old piece of glass. Sorry, Brandon. I think this is gonna be a must need for Cybertruck because <laughs> you are not reaching the top of that glass without. Well, you need the same thing for the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, for cleaning that glass in there. Just for grabbing stuff. It's a crazy piece of glass there. It definitely feels like I've washed so many Rivians at this point now. This just feels like a tank compared to just size wise not aesthetically but holy cow totally well it is bigger than the rivian too yeah substantially yeah can't wait to see how much water got into uh, the bed when brandon and i were in austin with uh his turbo one it was insane how much water was back there right oh brandon? wow yeah you wanted to ride in it yeah i would have been soaked <laughs> i don't know we'll be Curious to see. I got the new tonneau cover on my Rivian, by the way. Okay, how's that doing? Yeah, um, not great. <laughs> it still sounds terrible. I told Honestly. you when I was down at one of the showrooms one time, I broke one of theirs because it was just like the flimsiest piece ever. And I'm like, okay, maybe need to make that out of metal instead of very, very cheap. Glass. Yeah, I would say the, the pieces are much tighter tolerance on the Rivian now, but the motor still sounds like it's struggling. So... On those, do they do one motor on each side now? I don't think so. I think it's still a single motor. But the Cybertruck um, Tano vault thing is, seems much more substantial, but it did say that I used it too much and then stopped me from using it. I saw that, which was crazy. And then, you know, Tesla reached out to me, some of their engineers, and they were like, oh, we've never seen that before. But I'm like, you must have, because it's got the warning in there. Who put the warning in? <laughs> yeah, you used it. Yeah, they said they were going to check with the team and get back to me, but they obviously have not gotten back to me. Of course. So just going to quickly hit the bumpers here while we're at it. Just kind of get those nice and clean. I can feel these took a ton of damage on the road too, Kyle. Yeah, well, we were having to, I mean, Brendan was there too. We were drafting. <laughs> yeah, we were picking up all the rock chips a couple, on the road couple inches away from the lead car maybe less than a couple inches okay yeah we were we wore the lead car by touching them sometimes <laughs> nascar nice. what do they call that that's the old ricky bobby saying uh okay. shake and bake shake and bake baby yeah we did a couple shake and bakes we we literally became an extension of an 18 wheeler for about 50 miles. <laughs> yeah, the Rivian didn't even know it was us. Yeah, the Rivian thought, thought like, us. wow, that that 18 wheeler has uh, Cybertruck taillights. What's your impression of washing this? Is it easier than other cars, Colton? I mean, I kind of get used to vehicles, so anytime I wash a new car, it takes me a little bit of time to kind of feel out where I should start and things like that. It's definitely a lot different for sure, but I do like that you can just kind of come in here and really scrub it. You're not worried about scratching, things like that. 
tons of rust back here. But you would be worried about scratching on these plastic uh, panels exactly. and stuff. So yeah. yeah. So we'll polish that up at some point. And, yeah. And do the stuff on there and headlights too. Same thing. Yeah, I would highly suggest any Cybertruck owners coat their headlights because uh, even with the slightest bit of snow and schmutz, I couldn't see anything out of this truck. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know we tried that on your Rivian and it still Didn't just work. built up because yeah. there's just so much, there's not enough heat there. Yeah, it could be the same issue here, but at least then you can just like hit it with water or something. Right. And get it cleared off. I think anything would help because I was driving blind at night. I can tell you I don't like this area down here because I feel like I almost just cut my finger off. Oh, really? By wiping here. Oh, let me zoom in on that. Let's show the viewers. Yeah, so going in here to clean this mm -hmm. and it just caught my finger there. I'm like, oh boy, that could be a slight finger. Quicker. Yeah, that, that could be. Yep, that's why we're going to call this one. What are, we, what are we calling it, Alyssa? Chomps. 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 Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, final rinse now. And this will be probably the most interesting part to see what it actually looks like underneath us. Yeah. What are you doing here? Um, hmm. Look how weird that is. That is weird. No idea. And right here. Wow. I like wonder if it's the... hand oils or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like rubbed our oily finger across the Yeah, it's almost like, uh, yeah. Just did one of those and then touched it. <laughs> what the heck? Wow, so many little rock chips in here, like up here. You can see where it's catching on all the water coming off here. Yeah. So are those rock chips? Well, you can feel them. And to me, yeah, those are 100% rock chips. They're little divots in there. Yeah, wow, just peppered everywhere. So could we clay? Or Barkeeper's friend will probably take some of it. I bet some of it's contamination. 100% it is for sure. But I don't some think it's of this, all rock chips. No, but like these up here, I can really feel like this right here. That's 100% rock chips right in there. Yeah, for sure. Wow, it's definitely not smooth. Oh my gosh, feel the front. Well, those would be all the bugs. Lumpy. Toughest truck in the world. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So Kyle, are you okay with me testing a product that I have no idea what it's gonna do to it? Yep, because we are gonna wrap it. I need to fill this up. This is Gion Wet Coat. This is what I use on everything. Windshields, wheels, paint, trim, everything. I wanted to take this down to Austin with me, but this is basically a spray ceramic coating that doesn't last long at all. It's about three to six months or so. But that's what I would prefer to stain the to look like and have a little bit of something on there. Yeah, wow, nice. It's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah huge, that's huge difference. Great. So I think this will help with things like water spotting, some rain, all that kind well, of situation. Well, this is just laughing at me because I just put fingerprints in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got the car wash guy right here. Right, right here. Get the mitt out again, Colton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, grab a mitt there, buddy. That looks great. Obviously, we just kind of essentially coated over some bugs there, but I just want to put something on here while Kyle's, you know, testing for the next couple of weeks, and then wow, we'll... it looks terrible. The metal. Yes. <laughs> it's just like when you start getting up close to it, you just see streaks and crap yeah. everywhere. And that's where the barkeeper's friend really makes takes all those streaks away and really makes it a more even surface. Can I feel this? I'm curious to see if this feels slick. Mm. Not as much. A you can feel a little bit, but it's not a ton different. Huh. Okay. Throw that in the blue bucket for me, please.
Hmm. It's, it seems like maybe the effect has gone away. It's still doing this. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and it's doing this thing. That's what so strange. Heck? And it's getting like bigger in this area. It's literally I think we need to like barkeeper's friend the whole truck and start with a base surface. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course. So I can continue to do this. So you just have something on there or we can leave it alone. Totally up to you. Yeah, it's up to you. It's your, you're responsible for this thing. So oh, boy. I, I see no reason to protect it, but if you want to. Maybe we'll just do a little few areas and just kind of see what it does. Yeah, do some tests. All right, so I'll just leave the front end there, Kyle, and we'll just kind of see what that does, if it does anything, if it looks worse, and kind of go from there. So, next step is drying. Now, typically I would use something like a waterless wash with my drying situation for a drying aid. Waterless wash, I've tested on this, and it makes it a little funny. Um, so I'm probably just gonna towel dry it and then we'll just see exactly what the surface looks like. And again, we're gonna have to do a barkeeper situation on this. I've got some other products we can quickly test tonight, but yeah, this is uh, looking better, but not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it just looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it looks oh. terrible. Oh my God, I'm seeing the doors look worse. Well, I just re-dry those again. I think some of this water, once it evaporates, because it gets very humid in here, this will start going away. But this, is, the streaks that you get on this stainless is truly next level. Yeah, you can see all the drips. <laughs> that is in there. Um, I was looking at that over here. This is like an oil stain. I'm not exactly sure what exactly this is. That would definitely be a barkeeper situation there that'll take it off. So Reese, we may have to do that sooner than later, Kyle, because you're going to be annoyed with us, I have a feeling. Yeah, I'm annoyed with it now. <laughs> I would say that's uh, maple syrup. It's <laughs> maple syrup. <laughs> so, uh, washing, we got all the salt off of it, which is great. But yeah, the finish just looks terrible. Oh. And you can see all of the moisture inside of the door seal here. Yeah, wow. Wow. Well, that's worse than Model Y. It's still out of here. Yeah, it's... That's one thing, frameless windows, okay, they look cool, but sound insulation and water getting into the cabin is just not quite as good. So, all right, Kyle, there you go. Can't wait to have G wrap this thing. Test Bredos, can't come soon hey, enough. Just wait till we do the barking. Yeah, okay, yeah, I promise you six months. But six six months. months can't come soon enough. Yeah. Just finished up the wash here, and I gotta say the Cybertruck is looking better, but far from perfect. There's still quite a bit to do here on the stainless steel. Really need to go through with that Barkeeper's Friend solution, the Windex solution to get all the crud that's just baked in here. All that contamination on the paint, or not on the paint, on the stainless steel, as well as the bugs. Brandon, I'm gonna have you come over here. I wanna show the viewers this little panel here. So this basically triangle, maybe even come to the other side here so we can get the light reflections can see how much cleaner that looks. It's very even. I just basically did this portion up here. So this is a similar Barkeeper's Friend solution and a glass cleaner on here. And that's what I found worked best. Now, just off camera, I tested two coatings. We're still gonna do more videos on this. The coatings look like crap on here. It's truly insane what they actually do to the stainless. But I think for a good first wash video, this was a fun one. And thanks so much for watching another out-of-spec detailing video. We'll see you in the next one soon. Bye-bye.